Welcome to the channel, I'm Amedeo602, and today we're going to talk about GPU overclocking and how it impacts Warzone. I'm going to show you three different methods to overclock your GPU, and we're going to compare and contrast those methods with stock GPU performance. We're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each method, and then I'm going to show you the overclock that I'm currently using on my NVIDIA 3070. The test system we're using is an AMD 5600X with an NVIDIA 3070 graphics card and 16GB of 3733 RAM running with a cast latency of 16. I'm running the game in full screen mode with a resolution of 1440p. By the way, if you're watching this video and you're a little bit jealous of my frame rate, be sure to check out the FPS guide, I've got a link to that video in the description where I go through all my graphics settings. I'm still pumping out videos for how to increase your performance in Call of Duty Warzone on PC. You can make sure you don't miss any of those videos by subscribing to the channel right now and turning on the notifications by hitting the bell. In addition to Warzone, we're also going to be comparing the frame rate in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and the final score of a benchmarking tool called Superposition. All Superposition runs were done in 1080p Extreme Mode. First, let's cover the stock case where there is no overclock on the card. For reference, I'm using an EVGA GeForce RTX 3070 FTW3 Ultra. From the factory, the boost clock on this card is 1815 MHz and the memory is clocked at 7000 MHz. You can see the baseline performance for this card on the screen right here. I mentioned this in my FPS guide, but it bears mentioning again. Anytime you're doing FPS testing, it's really important to have repeatability in your tests, and that's why I like to use Warzone orientation just to see how big of an increase or decrease I get when playing around with settings. Obviously, the most important indicator is whichever game mode you prefer to play, Verdansk or Rebirth, and what kind of frame rate you're getting in there. So once you're done changing all your settings, be sure to drop into the game mode of your choice, play around, and have a little fun. The first method of overclocking we're going to talk about today is the auto overclock. There are several different ways that you can automatically overclock your graphics card. For all of my overclocking, I prefer to use a tool called MSI Afterburner. Different graphics card manufacturers have different utilities, but this is the one we're going to use today. To perform an automatic overclock in MSI Afterburner, press Ctrl F to bring up the voltage editor. You can also click on the Curve Editor button on the bottom left hand corner of the screen here. The very first time you do this, you may get some sort of a pop-up or a warning. That message is just telling you that you're going to be voiding your factory warranty by doing any sort of overclocking. So if you agree to that, go ahead and open the dialog. Automatic overclocking is just about as easy as it gets. You just push the OC Scanner button in the top right, press Scan on the pop-up that appears, and then let the process run to completion. On my system, this took about a half an hour. When the auto overclock finishes, it gives you a number that you can use for a core boost and a memory boost. All you need to do is type those numbers into MSI Afterburner, click the checkbox, and then click on the window icon in the top right of MSI Afterburner if you want those settings to be automatically applied when Windows starts. Now let's compare the auto overclock results to the stock performance of the card. In Warzone Orientation, where we are GPU limited, you can see the auto overclock increased the frames per second by 2. The frames per second in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War increased by 4. The power draw on the card between the stock and auto overclock was virtually the same, at least it was so small that the Nvidia overlay didn't show me any difference. The average temperature in Superposition was a little bit lower, and the average Superposition score only went up by about 20. Moving on to the traditional overclock, the procedure for this is a little bit more complicated, but still pretty straightforward, and you can find lots of good videos here on YouTube to walk you through it. I've got a couple good ones in the link in the description below. But basically, you take your power limit and slide that all the way to the right, and then you increase your core clock in 15 MHz increments until you find system instability. Once you get any sort of a crash in your benchmark program that you're running, or a lockup in Warzone, or a dev error in Warzone, back up and keep running tests. For stability testing, I like to run Furmark for a few minutes. I'm also a big fan of MSI's Combustor tool because it's so easy to use, it integrates right into MSI Afterburner. And really just playing through the Warzone orientation and the Karst River Quarry practice are great indicators of Warzone stability. Anyway, you increase that core clock by 15 MHz increments until you find system instability, then you back off. Continue backing off until you're convinced that your system is 100% stable, and then repeat the same procedure with the memory. Instead of moving in 15 MHz increments, I recommend moving in 100 MHz increments. 
By the way, if anyone's looking for baseline numbers to compare against, for my RTX 3070 I was able to achieve a 135 MHz core overclock and a 1200 MHz memory overclock. Moving on to the results of the traditional overclock, I was able to get Warzone Orientation FPS up to 268, an increase of 19 frames per second. In Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, my frames per second jumped from 180 all the way up to 195. Unfortunately, power draw increased as well. For the traditional overclock, my power usage increased to 213 watts. This led to higher temperatures in superposition. On average, those temperatures increased by about 3 degrees. The superposition benchmark score increased as well, all the way up to an average of 9,633. Moving on to the third and final method of overclocking, this is called undervolting. The theory behind undervolting is relatively simple. You tell the card to deliver less power at a higher frequency, and when you do that, the card is going to be able to boost higher because temperatures are lower. There are a couple of different methods to perform an undervolt. The simplest possible thing to do in Afterburner that I'm aware of is to open the curve editor, and then on the x-axis find the 1000 millivolt entry that corresponds to one volt. Click on that point and then drag it upward. The higher you drag up, the more your overclock is going to be at the 1 volt mark. Again, you want the overclock here to be in 15 MHz increments for an NVIDIA RTX card. And just like before, run your benchmark tests, make sure that your system is stable, and then once you figure out what that magic number is, you can either leave that core clock alone and only change that one point, or you can go and modify some of the other points on the chart by dragging them up to match the same y-axis overlap that you had at the 1000 millivolt mark. Personally, I like to go every 25 millivolts and just increase each one by the same amount. In my case, that magic number was 135, so I'm just going to grab each dot on the vertical line and drag it until I get to plus 135. If you're having trouble using the mouse to hit the exact mark, just let go of the mouse button and use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard to get to the exact numbers. When running with the GPU undervolted, I was able to achieve 260 frames per second in Warzone Orientation, 190 frames per second in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and even though I'm getting higher frames per second, there was a much lower overall power draw. When undervolted, we only drew 182 watts of power, compared to 200 watts of power with the stock and auto overclock, and 213 watts with the traditional overclock. Superposition temperatures were on par with the auto overclock and stock overclock at 60 degrees, and the superposition average score was 9,426. In other words, I got about a 6% boost in GPU performance with undervolting. To summarize everything here, the auto overclock gave almost no performance boost, the traditional overclock gave the largest performance boost right around 8%. This performance boost came at the cost of more power and higher GPU temperatures. With undervolting, we saw about a 6% performance increase. Along with that, we saw no increase in temperatures and less power usage. In other words, once you've undervolted your GPU and you're comfortable with the stability of the system, there really are no downsides. And because of that, I've got my GPU undervolted when I play Warzone. If you absolutely positively need an extra 2% boost, you can do that with a traditional overclock, but your system's going to run a little bit hotter and use a lot more power. And if you want even more Call of Duty Warzone FPS tips, tricks, and tactics, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my future uploads. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, thank you very much for watching.